This project started with this thing, which is called a zoetrope, or a zootrope, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And the principle of it is that you spin it and you look through the slits and you see a moving image. And from somewhere came the idea to have a lot of miniature horses in the zoetrope so that when you span it it would look as if there was a miniature three-dimensional horse galloping. There are two inspirational characters without whom this project would be impossible. The first is Id Weird Mybridge. It's a made-up name. His real name was Edward Muggeridge. He was a photographer born in 1830 and his most dramatic achievement during a dramatic life was his series of motion studies of humans and animals which led, among other things, to the invention of cinema. The second and more obscure inspirational character was Roy Selwyn Smith, a sculptor born in 1923 who made miniature toy figures in the 1950s and 60s. Mybridge's motion studies began with photographs of horses galloping. Before this time, the conventional view was that galloping horses had all four feet off the ground only at the point where their legs were outstretched. Mybridge's sponsor, the robber baron Leyland Stanford, president of the Central Pacific Railroad, was a horse racing enthusiast. He believed that it was only when the horse's legs were close together that all four feet were off the ground. Stanford gave Mybridge, who was already an established photographer, the task of proving whether or not his hunch was correct. Up to this time, the things that got photographed were things that kept still. Photography hadn't been applied to bodies in motion. So the task needed Stanford's large resources as well as immense ingenuity, but Mybridge managed to prove that Stanford's hunch was correct. He went on to produce complete photographic records of the horse's galloping motion, as well as large quantities of studies of the motion of humans and other animals. The results produced a sensational shift in the way that a horse's motion was viewed. In overthrowing the old notions of horse movement, they constituted a shock to conventional wisdom, appearing awkward and ungainly, an affront to nature's presumed grace. Mybridge's motion studies are an unromantic celebration of actuality. Some of the horse positions revealed by the motion studies are undeniably ungainly and were caricatured at the time because they seem so outlandish. But there also emerges, in some of the other stills from the motion studies, a new kind of elegance and poise. A figure maker naturally has a different set of priorities from a photographer seeking the secrets of horse motion. A model of a galloping horse, although it is in a frozen pose, needs to contain the energy and essence of the action of galloping. The positions which Roy Selwyn Smith chose for his horses display an awareness of a horse's actual movement, as revealed by Mybridge's photographs. And, in spite of their different priorities, Roy Selwyn Smith seems to me to share with Mybridge a faith in and enjoyment of the real. When I was a child, I assumed that these horses were produced by some photographic process akin to modern-day laser-produced 3D portraits. I would calculate that to produce a master this way you would need something like 800 strategically positioned cameras. It is plain to me now that my misunderstanding arose from the realism of these horses, 
unprecedented in the world of toy figures. And I try to follow the example of Roy Selwyn Smith. Most of my figures are either of human beings or of horses. And I find the human beings much easier because firstly I make much more of them than horses so I get more practice. And secondly when I'm making a human being I can sort of feel in my body the positions which work and with a horse I can't do that so I have to use my book of my bridge motion studies uh, he's got quite a few of horses and several of galloping horses and so when I'm choosing a position for a horse I try to choose one that's got the essence of the gallop encapsulate all the energy of the gallop in one pose Roy Selwyn Smith's got most of the best ones like that one and that one so uh, there's not much to work with you see there's some of the quite ungainly ones like that and that and that if you just had that by itself it wouldn't give you much energy but this project is about making figures of horses for the zoetrope the zoetrope in question I found among my deceased great great aunt's possessions in 1973 the way it works is that you put a printed strip in it spin it and look through the slips There's a whole load of strips and they're all quite cartoony except for this one which is published by Mybridge Attitudes of Animals in Motion by Mybridge Arranged for the Zoetrope Photographed from the life in 1878-79. As well as producing zoetrope strips, Mybridge developed the zoopraxiscope, which was a way of projecting his images and can be seen as a crucial step in the invention of cinema. My idea was to do these little horses in the zoetrope and I worked out, I don't know anything about optics but most of the strips that I have for this zoetrope have 13 images and there are 13 slits um, in the zoetrope so I decided that 13 was the number of horses I had to make and first of all I made my own strip from my Mybridge book the positions that I needed at the size that I needed I had to make one sort of constructed one because there were only 12 um, different positions available so that's that one and then I was going to just mechanically copy each of these including all the ungainly poses uh, in three dimensions and hope that it worked when Roy Selwyn Smith died I bought from his estate master figures for two of his horses these were used to make the moulds 
which produced the plastic figures. With the masters were Royce Owen Smith's preliminary drawings. One of the masters is stripped back to show the armature, the metal skeleton which supports the wax model. I used Royce Owen Smith's drawings and the exposed armature on the master as a guide for the structure of the armatures of my horses. Then I made tracings of all the horses in the motion study which I transferred to brass sheet. The drawing of the torso shapes derived from the tracings has been stuck onto some brass sheet as a guide for sawing. Then I soldered on copper wire legs and ears to complete the armatures. Thanks to my two guides, Selwyn Smith and Mybridge, I now had 13 armatures in the correct positions. I was ready to start sculpting. This stuff is called milliput. You take pieces of equal size from the two packets, like mixing araldite, and then you just knead them together until the colour is uniform and then carry on kneading for a further minute and then it's ready to use. Now that the stuff is mixed and I start adding it to the figure with this modelling tool. The good thing about Milliput is that it goes very hard but the difficult thing about it is that it's always going hard while you're working on it. It doesn't want to be to take the shapes that you're trying to impose on it. As I worked, I was relying on my Mybridge book, but also on books showing horse anatomy. After I've put the layer of milliput on each horse, I start building it up with stuff called modelling wax. I just scoop it up with a modelling tool. I love working with it. It's very compliant. The good thing about modelling wax is that it stays soft so you don't need to hurry because it's not going hard like with the millipat. But the problem with modelling wax is that it stays soft and so your work is always fragile. It feels wonderfully perverse to take the same care over the ungainly poses as the others. They seem so wrong, despite being a necessary part of the whole. Depending on how you define sculpting, you could call this anti-sculpting. When the modelling was completed, it was necessary to coat each figure with hardener and then to paint the figures using oil paint. And here are the finished horses in position in the zoetrope. It's funny to think that they will be able to remain there and sustain damage and gather dust over years, and yet with a spin of the drum, they will be able to spring into action and gallop for all their worth. Just like the Mybridge strip, which is in shocking condition, but can still conjure magic. <laughs>